Hello. We're out here at Shell Lake in Oklahoma, and um, the dam is super duper low, so you can see dirt all on our side of the screen, which I thought was kind of cool for my topic today. I'm going to read to you um, topic six about self-esteem. Most people experience feelings of low self-esteem from time to time. This is normal. However, if you were abused or traumatized when you were a child, low self-esteem may be your constant companion. The person or people who hurt you may have told you things about yourself that were not true, that you deserve to be hurt, that you are not worth anything, that you are bad or ugly, or that you never do anything right. They may have even tried to convince you that the abuse was your fault, that you deserved it. You may know logically that the things these people said to you were wrong, but in spite of having that knowledge, you may have carried these erroneous messages about yourself with you into adulthood, perpetuating the low self-esteem brought on by the abuse you did not deserve to be hurt. You are a good, valuable, beautiful person. You do many things well. The abuse was not your fault and you did not deserve it. Feeling bad about yourself can keep you from doing the things you want to do and living the life you want to live. You have a right to feel good about yourself so in this chapter, you will work on raising self-esteem. Self-esteem building. To do this exercise, you'll need a blank piece of paper. Set a timer for 10 minutes or note the time on a clock. Write your name across the top of the paper. Then write everything positive and good you can think of about yourself include special attributes, talents, and achievements. You can use single words or sentences, whichever you prefer. You can write the same thing over and over if you want to emphasize them. Don't worry about spelling, grammar, or organization. Write down whatever comes to mind, but avoid making any negative statements or using any negative words. One woman wrote the following. I am a warm, loving, and compassionate person. I am a very good person. I like to be kind to people. Many people like me. I love taking care of small children. When I am with them, I feel like I am doing something really good for myself and for the child or children I am playing with. I am also a very hard worker. People can count on me. I always do what I say I will, and I do it very well. When my mother was sick, I went to her house and scrubbed it from top to bottom. She was very pleased. I like to think of nice things to do for others. I empathize with others. When they are having a hard time, I try to do things for them to help them feel better. I am smart. In school, I was very good at math. I could figure out the problems quickly. I help my kids with their math homework. I encourage others to do the best they can. People say I have a nice smile and a nice laugh. When the 10 minutes are up, read the paper to yourself. You may feel sad when you do so because it is new, different, and positive way of thinking about yourself, a way that contradicts some of the negative thoughts you may have had about yourself. Read the paper several times, then put it in a convenient place, your pocket, your purse, your wallet, or the table beside your bed. Read it over to yourself several times a day to keep reminding yourself of how great you are. 
And the next one is invalidating the source. In learning to feel better about yourself, it helps to identify the person or people that gave you the erroneous messages about yourself in the first place and to make an accurate assessment of their qualifications to determine how you should feel about yourself. Who gave you erroneous messages about yourself? List everyone. Parents, siblings, grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, family friends, neighbors, other children, teachers, or clergy. And we've got several lines here, so you can write all those down. You're asking the question to yourself, who gave you wrong messages about yourself? All right, the next um, section is review the list. Next, write down one or several reasons why that person was not qualified to determine how you should feel about yourself. For example, Uncle Bill, not qualified to judge me because he forced me to do things that I did not want to do and he was mean to his own kids. Aunt Sally, drinks a lot of alcohol, uses drugs, and said nasty things to her kids all the time. So the space provided is for you to review the list and then to disqualify the people. All right, the next part is based on these assessments, you probably don't want these people deciding how you should feel about yourself. However, letting go of the effect these people have on your thoughts is often very difficult. The following may help. Cut the paper into tiny pieces and throw them away. Rip the paper up and stuff it in a dumpster. Color all over it with a black marker and put it in an incinerator. Make this into a quote unquote letting go ceremony. Many women feel much freer when they do this exercise. They feel as though they have gotten rid of the person or people who made them feel bad about themselves. And along with that go the bad feelings. If you notice yourself thinking about these people or the bad things they said to you or did to you at some point in the future, repeat this exercise. All right, more practice with positive thoughts. In topic three, you learn to change negative thoughts about your body to positive ones. This exercise is similar to the one you did then. This time you will make a list of negative thoughts you have about yourself and develop positive responses to each one. Again, use the following guidelines in developing your positive statements. First, avoid using negative terms such as bad, blame, shame, or guilty. Instead, use only positive words such as friendly, warm, compassionate, competent, or responsible. The next, substitute, it would be nice if, for, should. And the last one, use I, me or your name in the positive rebuttal. Two examples are provided to get you started with practice and persistence. You will find that you will think positive thoughts about yourself more and more often. Change I never do anything right to I do lots of things well. Change I'll never be worth anything to I am a valuable person. So we're going to take Make a list of negative thoughts that you have about yourself and develop positive responses to each one. So that's what that is there. More practice with positive thoughts. There's a lot of space for that there. As before, write the positive responses on a piece of paper and keep it in your pocket or some other convenient place to read over and over several times a day. Every time you catch yourself thinking the negative thought about yourself, replace it with the positive response. Okay, the next part is taking good care of yourself. Low self-esteem may make you feel 
something different. Um, low self-esteem may make you feel as though you don't need to take good care of yourself. However, you deserve to take good care of yourself. And if you work at it, you will find that you will feel better about yourself. Following are some ideas of things you can do right now. You may be doing some of them already. There will be others that you do need to work on. You will find that you will continue to learn new and better ways to take care of yourself over time. And as you incorporate these changes into your life, your self-esteem will continue to improve. Number one, diet. A healthy daily diet would be five or six servings of vegetables and fruit, six servings of whole grain foods such as bread, pasta, cereal, and rice, and two servings of protein containing food such as meat, eggs, beans, and nuts. Eating healthy food is a gift you can give yourself. If too much junk food is an issue for you, try to remember that the calories you get from it are almost completely empty. They give you very few of the nutrients you need to feel well and consequence, consequently boost your self-esteem. And by filling up on such food, you miss the opportunity to do something really good for yourself. All right, so we've got, um, this is not an issue for me. I eat very well, or I need to try to eat less junk food and more healthy food. I am going to begin by, and then there's a space provided to write it down. The next one is exercise. Moving your body helps you feel better and improves your self-esteem. Arrange a time every day or as often as possible when you can get some exercise, preferably outdoors. There are many different things you could do. Walk, run, ride a bike, play a sport climb up and down the stairs several times, put on a tape and dance to the music, anything that feels good to you. If you have a health problem that may restrict your ability to exercise, check with your doctor before beginning or changing your exercise habits. First, this is not an issue for me. I already exercise regularly. Second option is I am going to begin exercising I am going to, and then there's some lines for you to decide. And then the next one is, I will begin on this day. All right, number three, do something you enjoy. In topic one, you made a list of things you enjoy doing. Go back and review that list and take the time every day to do at least one item. And then, uh, this is not a problem for me. I do things I enjoy every day. Or, I am committed to doing something I enjoy. I have decided to. And then there's two blank lines. In order to do the things you enjoy, you may need to gather together some equipment or supplies, such as a sewing machine, a Scrabble game, art supplies, or books. So then it says, I'm going to collect the following items so that you can do the thing that you enjoy. So it's got a place for you to write that down. Then we get to number four, get good health care for yourself. Has it been a long time since you last had a physical examination? Do you have a chronic or acute health problem that needs attention? When was the last time you went to the dentist or had a pap smear? You deserve good health care. If you have a good insurance plan, this won't be a problem. If you don't, or if your access to health care is limited, see what is available in your community that is free or has a sliding scale. Fees you can afford. Call your local hospital to check on available options. Accessing good health care can be hard, but it is worth making the effort and getting what you need and deserve for yourself. Option one, this is not a problem for me. Option two, I need a physical examination. I will call and arrange it on this day. And the last is I have a health condition that needs attention. I am going to, 
and then you finish that sentence. Number five, if you have low self-esteem, you may neglect personal hygiene tasks that would make you feel better about yourself. Things such as a regular shower or bath, washing and styling your hair, trimming your nails, brushing and flossing your teeth, changing your clothes, or even getting dressed. You may feel so badly about yourself some days that you never get out of your night clothes. Option one, this is not a problem for me. Option two, I need to do the following to improve my personal hygiene. And then you would write that down. I'm going to begin doing these things on this day at this time. And number six, are there any other things you are going to start doing to take better care of yourself? If so, list them here. And the last two pages. Activities to raise self-esteem. Number one, make a list of your 10 greatest achievements. For example, I survived. I raised a wonderful child. I learned to read. So make a list of your 10 greatest achievements. Read this list often. Make a list, no, oh, sorry, number two for activities to raise your self-esteem. Make a list of 10 ways you can treat yourself that do not include food and that do not cost anything. For example, take a walk in the woods, window shop, watch children playing on a playground, study a beautiful flower, chat with a friend, Make a list of 10 ways you can treat yourself that don't include food and don't cost anything. Give yourself one or several of these treats every day. Number three, laughing makes you feel good about yourself. Make a list of five things that make you laugh. Do something that makes you laugh at least once every day. And the final piece, optional activities. Make an appreciation paper. At the top of a sheet of paper, write things I like about, and then it says your name, so yourself, I guess. Have friends, acquaintances, and family members write a statement about how or why they appreciate you. When you read it, just accept it. Read this paper over and over. Keep it in a place where you will see it often. Number two, do a mutual complimenting exercise with a friend. Set aside 10 minutes and sit in two chairs facing each other. For the first five minutes, tell the other person everything you like about them and list as many of their special attributes as you can think of. For the second five minutes, your friend will do the same for you. And number three, in working on topic one, you set up a special place to do this work and you were encouraged to decorate that space with special mementos. Add to that space objects that remind you of what a wonderful, special person you are. Look at these objects whenever you need to bolster your self-esteem. And then final one is things to remember every day and these are the kind of things that I save in my phone and they just pop up and remind me I deserve to feel good about myself I deserve to take good care of myself that includes eating right getting plenty of exercise doing things I enjoy getting good health care and attending to my personal hygiene needs. I choose to spend my time with people who are nice to me and make me feel good about myself. I am a good person and I deserve to be alive. Well, thank you, my few select friends that listen to this. I appreciate
appreciate you so much. This topic has been topic six, self-esteem.